All right, my name is Rich Schmidt. I'm here with Elena Rodriguez. It's August 12th, 2019. Uh, we're on her property here over in, uh, in, in Amity. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today, Dayton, Elena. Uh, in Dayton, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. We're on her property over here in Dayton. <laughs> Thanks so much for joining us today. Uh, let's start with the question, uh, why grapes? Why, why a vineyard? So my father uh, bought this land in 96. Um, I grew up out in Gaston and then later on he, we, he bought this um, in 96 and then we, he decided uh, he was more, more um, he was approached by a friend actually that was in the industry. He was a vineyard manager and he knew a lot about grapes and um, he knew how to plant grapes and so he was approached by his friend to to plant grapes out there. It wasn't really in the plan of our farm. It just kind of, we were, my dad originally did cattle and when I was in high school, I raised sheep, my brother did pigs. We kind of did the whole thing and kind of did that, you know, farming and grass basically because this is what mm -hmm. the land was, you know, for. So that all changed in 2005 when his friend approached him and he um, asked him if he wanted to plant some grapes out there. And uh, my father being, um, I guess a visionary, you can say. I mean, he, he was born and raised in Mexico, Durango, immigrated over here in the 70s, and he was a farmer over in Mexico, and he always envisioned having a farm here in the U.S., so um, he ended up having the farm, and so he kind of kind of went further and planted the, the grapes in 2005. So that's where, that's how that kind of started. Um, I wasn't around for that. I had already moved out. I had already gone to college and I was living uh, out of state at that time. But I would sometimes come back and see what my father was doing. And so this is, it was really interesting to me because, it, you know, there was a, uh, you don't really, didn't really tend to see uh, vineyards on the valley floor. Mm -hmm. So um, there was a lot of like, you know, why are you doing that? That's not gonna work, you know, all that kind of stuff. But my father just kept pushing on and doing it. and. Um, now, here I am, <laughs> managing it for him. So I moved back um, in 2015, so it was five years ago. Um, I came back and it was really, you know, we we're all, it's all a family operated thing. And so it was really um, kind of my, my father was kind of asking me, you know, do you want to take over the vineyard? He's kind of moving on, retired from this and from the whole farming thing actually. So he doesn't do anything out here. And, um, my father is a farmer at heart. I never pictured myself farming at all. I studied, I pursued nursing actually, so. Um, but I saw how much it meant to him. It meant, I mean, he, he, this, he kind of, this was kind of his dream to do this. And so um, it was kind of an honor had to take over the vineyard for my father. And so I started doing that in 2015. And um, I, I, granted I didn't do wine, I didn't do vineyard or anything. So it was all new to me, so I kind of, I kept working part-time and then I, I worked a vineyard part-time after that and um, there was kind of a transition where it was like vineyard just kind of just sucks you in and you just kind of have to give it all it, all your time to that so mm -hmm. there was a point to where I was like you know I really need to start focusing more on this if I really wanted to want to do more with it and so and it, it really wasn't I loved it too it wasn't something that that I was just like um, maybe I'll do this maybe on the side but it was something it, I, I really enjoyed it learning about it I mean vineyards are so complex and every vineyard is completely different and so um, just trying to learn my site um, was a challenge of course and then um, yeah and so slowly in these last course of the five years it kind of just I kept getting more drawn into it and um, loving it and enjoying it and learning the vineyard and appreciating wine is where it kind of came came out too. So, yeah. So when your when your father made the decision to put in grapes, uh, where did he get the knowledge and, and get the grapes and get to make the decisions on what he wanted to plant and how? So it was really his friend mm -hmm. that was the vineyard manager. Mm -hmm. He's um, he planted a lot of uh, started planting a lot of vineyards around this area, and so um, his friend that was the vineyard manager really is the one that told him what kind of clones mm -hmm. to plant on here what he thought would be a good idea to put here and um, managing it though was kind of a challenge because I um, it's a completely different site um, to all the ones that are up on the hills so my question is when I first arrived it was you know um, oh you shouldn't have such a thick cover crop or you shouldn't have this or that or th certain things and but but as slowly I just I started understanding that 
um, this site is is very different from mm -hmm. even just like if you go, I go two miles away mm -hmm. from here or a mile away from here, it's completely different. So um, that part, um, I learned more about just just reading. I read a lot, um, mm -hmm. and so I, I have haven't taken any like formal education classes on anything really, but um, I'm planning to. <laughs> <laughs> um, on the vineyard, I haven't, but that's just more just out there learning and kind of learning from the vineyard. So. Mm -hmm. Tell me, about the, tell me about the challenges then of having a, a valley floor uh, a site and what it what it exactly makes it different from uh, on the hills. Um, so the vigor is prob is the number one um, issue with um, that I noticed when I first started. It was either um, well, most people that would come out here, my buyers, of course, you know, oh, you need to take care of the vigor, you need to take care of the vigor. You know, that was the number one thing that that uh, uh, people would say, mm -hmm. and then. Um, so that finding the ba the right balance for that was um, was a challenge. Mm -hmm. Trying to figure out how much cover crop to do and put to not till, but then being on the valley floor, I have a lot of moles and voles too. So then the tilling helps with that. Mm -hmm. And so we had some like mole and vole issue with some when I stopped when I put a lot of cover crop. Mm -hmm. so, that, so trying to find a balance with that was one of the was probably the hardest thing and probably still is a, t a challenge. <laughs> Every year is different. This year is completely different from last year. <laughs> I thought I had it down last year was a great year and then this year I'm like oh gosh what's going on. <laughs> so Why is it raining in August? <laughs> yeah exactly. I still have a bright green cover crop out there. Usually my grass is like dead by then and then I start tilling and I'll do you know so but yeah it's every year is different here in Oregon so <laughs> That is the number one challenge that I have, um, trying to find a balance for the vine, the growth of the vine. And sometimes it's just uh, walking out there, looking, listening, and watching the vines. It's, I spent a lot of time doing that, and so. Um, you mentioned kind of developing a love for the vineyard. Uh, tell me about the what it is that appeals to you about farming grapes. It's completely different than anything else. I grew up, you know, having a garden and uh, having cattle and stuff but um, the the process to it and the um, I guess um, in the end the product mm -hmm. of, of wine is what was actually amazing and then and the fact that I can do certain um, practices out in the vineyard to change the quality of the grape mm -hmm. is and ultimately the wine mm -hmm. is uh, was something really amazing to me I was like oh I, I, I can um, drop some fruit here I can thin here I can start thinning earlier be, try this experiment like do it before bloom or after bloom and see what I get mm -hmm. and um, that's kind of what what was really um, there's so many different things to, to do out out in your vineyard that you can as a, as a small grower because I could walk out there and I, I tend to to I have certain rows that are like mine and I will care the care for them and and, and I'm able to experiment kind of mm -hmm. and see mm -hmm. what the outcome will be at the end and I, I thought I thought that was just you know as I grow if I could see and, and do the change my practices maybe to see that what the ultimate product will be mm -hmm. is what was very interesting out there in the vineyard. <laughs> you mentioned uh, buyers and finding buyers. How have you guys gone about finding people to buy your grapes? And, and then what have their expectations been for what they're going to get from you? Um, so early on, we always had really big, big buyers, big mm -hmm. companies come out. And um, we're, we've been very fortunate that um, every year we've always had a buyer. We've never had a problem finding anybody. Mm -hmm. um, I guess I thank God for that, and also my brother. He, my brother's a sales guy, so he's really good at that too. I'm, 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 so we've been very fortunate that we've never had an issue with that. Um, there have been some buyers that are more um, involved, mm -hmm. uh, more winemakers that have been involved, um, wanting us to do more certain things, um, and that that's always challenging. Um, it was always challenging. Uh, it, now it's not so much. I tend to go for less involved buyers <laughs> now that I can do that mm -hmm. so um, and but but it was uh, it really was um, sometimes it was um, discouraging too just to hear like some winemakers come out here and be like you know your grapes are no good this isn't I told you to do this or and and labor is minimum I mean we're finances and so this is mm -hmm. um, 
it was challenging and um, just to hear uh, uh, their feedback on things, mm -hmm. um, not all positive. So, mm -hmm. um, and next year trying to make those changes as much as best as I could with the resources that I had. Mm -hmm. So um, slowly getting better and having a qu better quality grape is what I've been trying to achieve. And so it's all been, all, all have been good in the end, you know, even with that feedback that some of those winemakers have, have, have come out here and, you know, uh, given their, their opinion about the site and about mm -hmm. the grapes. So that's all been very helpful. And what do you have planted out there right now? It's all Pinot Noir Pinot <laughs> right Noir. now. Um, various different types of clones. And so um, when my father uh, planted it, his friend didn't really have like a, you know, this clone will do well here, or this clone won't do well. Um, but over the years, I've noticed which ones kind of do better out there. And so um, we are planning more in s of a certain kind of clone and then all, um, also of a different grape as well. Oh, really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What else are you going to plant We're going to plant Riesling out here nice. too. Nice, excellent. So, yeah, just to get some variety. <laughs> <laughs> you talked about sort of the, the feedback from, from buyers and, and how that sort of, in, in the end, helping the products. So tell me what you, what you what your terroir is what do you feel like your grapes are right now what do you feel like your grapes made from your wine or wine made from your grapes is going to represent well that's kind of hard to to i guess explain um i know in the end um i don't know I, there's a lot of different wine that ex kind of expresses your site in your your area i think for me um my, my terroir is what it is, but in the ultimate product, I kind of, I want just good wine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, um, trying to find like how to, this wine will express, uh, you know, your terroir this way. I, it, sure, that, that, that's great, but I just want people to really enjoy my wine and have it to be good, mm -hmm. really, in the end. I want it to be a, to be a good product. <laughs> um, and have it taste good is the, is the ultimate thing, so. I can see yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> so tell me about the tell me about the decision to start start making your own wine. Um, so I, I I didn't grow up drinking wine, or um, so it was all very new to me mm -hmm. when I started managing the vineyard, um, and one of the things um, was just the fact that we have grapes out here and we have a vineyard and um uh i guess how do i um and slowly my appreciation for wine you know started started developing and i found i i becoming more interested in it and um i think and ultimately i just i wanted to um be able to to share what my father started here and um, over the years what I've learned mm -hmm. and um, hopefully with my, I think I, with my wine I wanted to represent um, my heritage first of all and, um, and kind of share the, I guess the, the Latino community that works out here. Mm -hmm. We're, we kind of have a footprint in almost every vineyard out here in Willamette Valley. And um, I wanted to be able to share that through my label and represent um, my, my heritage and also um, having a vineyard mm -hmm. through, through my wine label. So that was So tell us about, about the label and about the, the, your decision on a name. Yeah, so Alumbra um, is Spanish um, for to shine or shine forth. Um, chose it because it's in Spanish for you know being Mexican American, and then um, to shine forth in, in Spanish alumbra means a little bit more um, has more of a deeper meaning of goodness and of um, happiness. So I wanted to something that represented my family values. Um, so we grew up in a really traditional. Um, Mexican family, you know, respect others, honor others, um, and be g g good in this mm -hmm. world. So I wanted something to represent that in, in the name. And I wanted uh, Alumbra to um, be able to, you know, to, to um, 
treat my employees that way and my customers that way and kind of have um, a good uh, uh, company value too. So I wanted a name that kind of wanted to, she, she kind of ha embraced all that. <laughs> so. It's not even just a name, but more like a philosophy for, for yeah, what you're trying to do. Yeah, kind of. Mm -hmm. So tell me about the process then of, of getting into the winemaking, of, of making all the decisions you have to make in terms of what you're going to bottle, getting bottles, making labels, all the kind of beginning process, all the paperwork. Tell, <laughs> tell me about what it's been like the last, yeah, the last year or so. so. Um, decided to make my first vintage last year. I mean, uh, for 2018, our, it, for, as a grower, it was amazing. We had a lot of fruit and um, and we had kind of uh, some extra and I was like, and I had already been volunteer, how I got into more into the winemaking part is with just with my buyers asking, can I help during, during harvest to process your, I'll go and drop off the, the grapes and we'd start processing and I'd be, and I kind of just asked them, I'll volunteer and help. And so um, I just started volunteering during their uh, uh, harvest season and their cellar and the winery, helping clean, helping, with whatever I could, just mm -hmm. to see the whole process how it starts, and so eventually it led to I have some. Can I? Can I? You know, follow along with what you're doing, and um, you know, the winemakers have been very. Uh, that that's been pretty amazing because they've all been uh, very much uh, happy to share mm -hmm. what they're doing and how the process goes and what you need to do and how you need to go buy barrels and how you buy racks and how you buy the you know all this kind of thing so they all very much so um, very helpful on on that part um i just kept kind of kind of bugging and asking <laughs> and asking so um eventually i i was able to find a winemaker that um helped me with the process of the whole thing and so um very fortunate that he's been helping me with this um this last year and um so yeah so we started out you know, he's been uh, great with like contacting, like these are the people that you can contact to buy barrels from and racks from and um, any kind of equipment from, this is how much you need. If you're gonna do this much, you know, tonnage of grapes, it's how many um, barrels you need. So it's pretty much, I've had that mentor there that's helped me make those types of decisions of how much fruit I wanted um, to, to make and um, how much wine I wanted to produce and all that. So he's been very helpful. I don't think without him, it would have been more of a like Google search and <laughs> asking and calling uh, over and over people. So um, I think just having that one connection and that one person that kind of takes you in to guide you has, uh, it, it's made the process a lot, lot easier for me. Yeah. What about the process surprised you? What about the, the, the making of wine the post vineyard part of it surprised you yeah um i've never done that that, that point i've always been on this part of it um and it initially it was a lot because i i'm out here harvesting and then um i have to go into the you know so i would harvest all day in the morning and then i'd be in the winery all day till you know so it was it was kind of a lot and and that part was kind of like, okay, my, do I really want to do this? But then in the end, there is, you know, there is an ending point to that. You're like, okay, I just have one more day of harvest. And then, you know, we could just do the, the cellar work and the winery part of it. And so, um, I, surprisingly, you know, being out here, I actually, I, I work out there and I do a lot of it out there. I actually enjoyed the, the winery work. So mm -hmm. it was, um, I enjoyed being with all the, the smells of it, <laughs> of the grapes and seeing the change um, from coming off this, that, I think that that's what's most satisfying to me and watching that part, picking and seeing it come off the stems and getting processed and seeing it go into the fermenter and then fermenting and doing punch downs and that, I loved all that, I enjoyed all that. I thought it was gonna be hard work and I was like, oh, I don't think I'm gonna be able to do this and it's actually easier than out there. So <laughs> I, I was okay with it and, and I very much, I enjoyed it. So um, one of the things I guess that, um, once I learned the process of how to make wine, um, it was a lot easier at first. It was just, you know, it was a little bit everywhere and a lot to take in. So, um, but, um, I can't remember what your original question was that you asked uh, me. If there's anything surprising about <laughs> surprising. the process. Um, I'm trying to... 
I mean, like you said, it was yeah. pretty new. Kind of everything, was. everything was new. I was just curious if it was. We talked. We talked to a lot of people about the winemaking process. Sometimes they have their like. I didn't know there was so much cleaning. I didn't know there was so much. You know. Stuff. Yes, that, <laughs> that that is true. You do you do do a lot because that's how I first started. You know, helping out, and so it is a lot of cleaning. Um, but like I said, it wasn't as bad as working out in the vineyard <laughs> <laughs> and doing the harvest work part of it. So. Um, I guess just coming from a hardworking family and hardworking that I, I guess I kind of just fell right into it and I was like, oh, I can do this. I guess the surprising thing was that I looked at the process and I thought, oh, yes, this is something that I can do. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I wanted to get in there and see if I was something that, oh, this is not for me. I don't think I'm gonna be able to do this. So surprisingly, it wasn't as difficult as I thought it was going to be. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> And your first vintage is brand new, yes. just out, yes. uh, 2018 Rosé. Mm -hmm. so tell me about what that feels like to have that in the bottle. Uh, gosh, the, the whole process of um, getting all the licensing and all that has been really long and hard and I didn't realize the whole process to that. So I should have started that a long time ago to get all that done. Um, that was the most, I think, for me, not being on the business side of things and not knowing um, that part. Um, uh, my um, my family has helped me a lot with that, so I'm I'm grateful that they've done that whole all the paperwork side of things mm -hmm. and um, helped me with it. Um, and so finally being able to get my label, I felt I feel like it, I started this process last year, and it's just barely I barely, you know, I was barely able to get the go ahead to print it, you know, like three weeks ago. So I didn't realize that's how long it took to get that done. So that part was a kind of like a, um i guess you can say like oh my gosh the summer's gonna be over and i still haven't had my rosé out and i'm just sitting there waiting for <laughs> like the you know get all that licensing done and get the email and be like okay you can finally do that so that part um was a little bit discouraging just kind of waiting around for that to finally be done so now that it finally uh, arrived um it's it it's kind of scary now because <laughs> uh, now you have the whole part of sales and it is a, this is a small operation I work out in the vineyard I work in the winery now I have the wine and I actually I go out and I sell it so that whole part is um, I think the hardest for me out of the whole, everything I am first for most a farmer that loves to be out here <laughs> uh, walking through my vineyard you know I don't really talk to many people throughout my day so um, that has been um, a new challenge. And I knew that was gonna be challenging for me, so I've been kind of preparing for it. Mm -hmm. uh, and, but yeah, it, it didn't really prepare me. <laughs> I didn't really prepare myself for it. So, but yeah, that, that, that just came out and I'm really excited that it finally did. Um, and it just kind of feels unreal for, for a while just because I've been thinking about it for a while, you know, maybe I can make my wine, maybe not. Maybe my grapes aren't good enough. They're, they are, they're not, you know, getting all over that and kind of building the confidence to finally saying like, okay, I'm just gonna do this and try it. And um, yeah, so that, that, that's kind of exciting and scary all at the same time, so. <laughs> I can see that. Yeah. Is there, is it a little nerve wracking to have like a product out there with your name on it that's now people are gonna drink? Yes. It is because you know you never know. People are like, oh, this is great. Oh, this is not. And, but and and it's something that I worked hard on. So it's something you know, especially when you kind of put I put all my work out in the vineyard and the winery. And in the end, this is you know, this is kind of like my heart and soul. And here it is. And so it is. It is very, very um, ner nerve wracking, like you said, to kind of put that out there and be like, this is me. <laughs> this is you know. And I hope you if you enjoy it or not. So yeah. So what has it been like? You, don't, you mentioned sort of getting prepared for selling wine and now you have wine to sell. So what has it been like and what are you kind of foreseeing for sort of sales strategies as you look ahead? Yeah, so this is, um, I've kind of talked to my, my brother is kind of like my, he's like I said, he's my sales guy. He's really good at stuff like that as well, but I kind of get out there too doing it. And um, our, one of our marketing um, projects, I guess you can say, for us, um, we wanted to try to focus on selling more wine to the Latino community. Mm -hmm. That was one of our number one reasons of why we wanted to make the wine originally, just to share who we are. And this is um, 
a a product from there's not that many Latinos that 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 make wine and that that sell it and so um, we wanted to try to uh, share it to the Latino community first so like sell it at um, Mexican restaurants with Mexican food and that's not really part of our culture mm -hmm. so um, first and foremost a lot of the times um, the Mexican food is paired with like beer or hard liquor that's like the number one thing that mm -hmm. that most people tend to drink at those types of places so um, yeah, I've gone out there and I've been talking to some of them and they're looking at me like, well, I don't know, are you sure? I'm like, look, this I know this is kind of, you know, new, it is new, you know, but um, that's one of the things I want to try to do. I want to try to get more Latinos to buy wine and, and I wanted to want to see if that if that's going to happen. And so one of the things I wanted to start selling at the, the um the Mexican stores, the Latino stores where they, you know, where they sell their, mm -hmm. um, their food at and stuff. And so that's one of the things that I've gone out to and I've tried to um, talk to about that. My whole uh, kind of idea that I have on um, pairing wine with Mexican food. Mm -hmm. So it, I, it, you can do it, it's just not common. So mm -hmm. that's one of the things that I'm trying to trying to do. Are you getting some traction? Are people taking you up on the chance? I got one one guy <laughs> <laughs> out in McGinnville and yeah, so he's, um, he, uh, I don't know, I, I don't know if I can say his name or not, sure. but Jimmy out and um, he just opened a restaurant out in McMinnville, right by Linfield, Mescal. Oh, Mescal. Yeah. So I went and talked to him and he was really, he was, he was excited about it. He's like, yeah, this is such a great idea. So um, we've been talking, I've been talking to him and he's, he was very inviting and really, um, really, you know, enjoyed the, the idea that I had. So um, that was encouraging. Um, but of course other places were like, well, I don't know, I don't have a lot of people that, you know, a lot of Latinos come in and buy wine, I don't know. And so I'm like, I know, it's, I know it's not very common. So that's uh, one of our things that we are, you know, one of our marketing um, projects or kind of things that we have on the side. So, yeah. It's exciting. Yeah. <laughs> Challenging, but yes, exciting. Yes, it is a challenge. <laughs> it is. <laughs> So as you, as you look ahead for yourself and for Alumbra, what are you, what are you kind of hoping for as you look, say, five, ten years down the road? What is your kind of goal in, in mind? I definitely want to increase my production for sure. Um, and um, maybe, hopefully, all our, you know, be all estate, you know, mm -hmm. um, uh, wine that we have, all of it. but. Um, Oh gosh, before uh, ten years down there, I don't think I've seen that yet. But maybe, you know, two, maybe two years down the road. Yeah, it's being just just that we started, um, I'm you know maybe hopefully uh, open up a little tasting room was one of the things that we are kind of kind of um, thinking about mm -hmm. for the near future. Yeah. Um, yeah. We got a great little location here, if you, yeah. potentially. <laughs> um, so. I, what have you, you you mentioned kind of your, your your connections with the Oregon wine industry? What have you what have you kind of seen of the Oregon wine industry? And what do you, and what do you expect as you're growing for the Oregon wine industry to, to look like? Um, I know there's a the small like really family owned um, vineyards and wineries are um, kind of that's kind of what what Oregon wine what kind of started and how it. it how it became what it is, you know, and so um, I'm hoping I still see a lot more small family owned vineyards and wineries around there that are um, keeping it small and Oregon local is kind of what I like and um, hopefully more people, you know, start their own little vineyard out there and hopefully more, I, I, I want to, you know, more Latinos have the, um, what is it? Uh, courage to do that you know um, we know how to plant it we know how to grow it we know how to take care of it um, it's just the whole wine part that you know it is intimidating to kind of go out there and start that um, but hopefully I see more out there that begin to do you know part of the wine and the winery part of it so and, and what advice would you have what would you, your words of wisdom be to someone who wanted to join the industry today Perhaps a Latino person wanted to join the industry today. Yeah, um, don't be 
afraid to fail <laughs> um, is one of the things, you know. And I know, and you will probably end up having a lot of failures, but that's kind of along with the business is number one thing is just I would say just don't be afraid of failure. Just uh, keep going and moving forward and. You know, things may not work out the way you thought in the end, but um, just learning it and um, sticking to it and moving forward each time, it's kind of scary, And um, but uh, if you kind of keep, keep with it and kind of determined to do it, just, um, yeah, I would say don't be afraid to fail. <laughs> Excellent. My, Excellent that would advice. be my advice. Yeah. Is there any questions? That's all the questions that I have for you today. Uh, is there anything I should have asked that I didn't? Anything we should have talked about that we didn't c cover? Um, kind of an open forum here, so yeah, something we didn't no, talk about. I think that's it, yeah. Okay. All right. Well, thank you thank so much you. for your time, and congratulations on your, on your first vintage. Thank uh, you. And uh, to many, here's to many more, hopefully. And, well, yes. <laughs> <laughs> we'll let you off the hook here. Thank you. Thank you.